The Kremlin is likely using the comprehensive strategic partnership agreement between Russia and North Korea to offset Russian force generation and ensure border security. This strengthens Russian leader Vladimir Putin's commitment to avoid mobilization for as long as possible. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, reported this. Ukrainian media outlets Suspiln and Liga, citing anonymous military intelligence sources, reported that Russia's 11th Airborne Brigade is forming a 3,000-person battalion, staffed by North Korean citizens, a number much larger than typical battalion size. Ukrainian intelligence assessed that this battalion would likely be deployed in ongoing Russian defensive operations in the Kursk Oblast. There have also been reports of up to 18 North Korean soldiers deserting their positions in Bryansk and Kursk Oblasts before the unit was even engaged in combat. Meanwhile, Putin submitted the text of the Russia-North Korea Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement signed in June 2024 to the Russian state Duma for ratification. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov, commenting to Kremlin-aligned Russian news agency TASS, emphasized that the agreement explicitly provides for mutual defense and security cooperation. It appears the Kremlin is using this mutual defense clause to justify the deployment of North Korean soldiers to the combat zone in response to Ukrainian operations in Kursk Oblast. ISW has also noted that recent reports suggesting a small number of North Korean personnel was operating near the Russian-occupied city of Donetsk. The United States has expressed concern over reports of potential North Korean military involvement in Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. White House National Security Council spokesperson Sean Savet stated that if the reports about North Korean troops in Ukraine are confirmed, it would mean a significant strengthening of defense relations between North Korea and Russia. Such a move would also indicate a new level of desperation for Russia as it continues to suffer significant casualties on the battlefield in its brutal war against Ukraine, he said. Earlier, President Volodymyr Zelensky accused North Korea of deploying personnel to Russia, citing intelligence about the actual involvement of North Korea in the war in Ukraine. Hundreds of trucks were seen queuing on the Lena Highway in Amur region and neighboring Sakayakudia after heavy snowfall drastically worsened road conditions. Local authorities had to close the highway near the Nagorni settlement in Sakayakudia, which stopped traffic completely. The continuous snowfall and steep drop in temperatures over the weekend trapped many vehicles on the way to Yakudia from the Trans-Siberian Highway with some of them sliding into ditches. Rescue services arranged heating stations for drivers and helped them to tow their stalled cars. The highway was reopened later on Tuesday. В результате ограничения движения возле населенного пункта Нагорный Дюрингринского района наблюдается скопление грузового автотранспорта более 230 единиц техники на протяжении 9 километров трассы. Водителям подготовить транспортные средства для движения в сложных условиях. A Russian man was rescued in the stormy sea of Okhotsk after surviving for more than two months in a tiny inflatable boat that lost its engine, but his brother and nephew died, officials said Tuesday. The prosecutor's office in the far east of Russia said that the man was rescued Monday by a fishing vessel off the Kamchatka Peninsula. It didn't name the survivor, 
but Russian news reports identified him as 46-year-old Mikhail Pachujin, who in early August set on a journey to watch whales in the Sea of Okhotsk together with his 49-year-old brother and 15-year-old nephew. Their bodies were reportedly found in the boat when the Angel fishing vessel rescued Pachujin. Media reports said the three men traveled to the Shantar Islands off the northwestern shore of the Sea of Okhotsk in early August. They went missing after setting off on their way back to Sakhalin Island on August 9. A rescue effort was launched but failed to locate them. Russian media reported that the trio had a small food ration and about 20 liters of water when their engine failed and they found themselves adrift. Pichujin weighed about 50 kilograms when he was found, having lost half of his body weight, news report said. He didn't immediately say how he managed to survive in the Sea of Okhotsk, the coldest sea in East Asia and known for its gales, and how his brother and nephew died. When the crew of the fishing vessel spotted the tiny inflatable boat on their radar, they initially thought it was a buoy or a piece of junk, the Komsomolskia Pravda newspaper said, but they turned on the spotlight to make sure and were shocked to see Pachujin. A video released by the prosecutor's office showed an emaciated man in a life jacket desperately shouting, come here. And the crew working to pull him back to safety. I have no strength left, Pachujin said as he was taken to safety. Prosecutors said that they launched an investigation into the incident on charges of violation of safety rules that resulted in deaths.